to another episode of Haunt Talk. Today's episode, we will be reviewing Scare Manor at Hillview Manor yep. in Newcastle, PA. New, Newcastle, PA. Um, so I have never been here at all before. Kim has been here for um, one of the ghost hunts because it is an actual haunted building. Yes. Um, and also I want to just say uh, real quick too, you if you watch our episodes where they come out, you're probably noticing this is coming out on like a Tuesday because we have five reviews coming up this week. So make sure to stay tuned because we have um, one that's closer to this one called Hubbard Haunted Woods. Mm-hmm. And then we also have a bunch of Columbus ones. Uh, Fear Columbus, Carnage, and um, Jail of Terror. Um, so those are all be coming out this week as well. So yeah, so we decided to check out this place. We thought it would be cool because it, we're like, oh, it's inside of an actual haunted building. Um, well, there's going to be a surprise about that. Yes. But um, yeah, that being said, we will go ahead and just get into the review, which of course, as always, means we need to refer to the Book of the Dead. Book of the Dead. Look at the dead! Look at the dead! It's getting so big. You're getting so big, yes you are! You're getting so big. Alright. <laughs> so as always, we're going to start off with sets and props, but I think um I think before we begin, we should talk about what it was like when we got to this place, because it was uh, an interesting experience buying tickets. Yeah, so <laughs> Um, they they had some signs up, and um, they were kind of odd. They were just kind of posted in the ground and stuff. And we f- ended up finding out we had to go into this one room, um, this one door to get our tickets. So we get in there, and um, first off, they want, like, all this information about you. And then they need to send you a waiver to sign and now, then send back to them. Yeah, because now I like, reading the waiver, it's like basically the same waiver that you will sign if you ghost hunt because it yeah. makes you like say that you like if you, which is really, their policy for this is really annoying. Like they say like if you're ghost hunting there and you want to film, because we want to do an episode there, but you have to like get like special permission if you're going to edit the footage if you film there, which I don't even know if they can actually do. Like how can you control what footage I edit? Like. That is so weird to me and it's so <laughs> off-putting. That's why we have not done one of our Haunted Adventures episodes. Yeah. And if you don't know, we do Haunted Real video, real Places as well, so check yeah. that out. But yeah. So they send us these waivers, and like he said, it's basically the same waiver you would get if you go on a ghost hunt. And then you have to send it back to them. Um, and they had to find us back again and check us in. Then we had to wait in a waiting room. <laughs> yeah. And mind you, we were I think we were actually the first group through. Yeah, we were the first group f- through. So they send us, it was just the two of us, and they send us with another couple. And they're like, oh, follow these nurses and they'll lead you to where you need to go. So we go into like these main doors into the building. And then we go out a side door into the outside. Mm-hmm. And they continue to take us down this driveway and they're like, follow the path right. until you get to the haunted house. And we were like, okay. So like we kind of thought, and I knew, so, and it's kind of my fault for not researching it more. Yeah, and we're going to talk know. about the actual attraction in detail. Don't worry. But we go and there's like the, this like section that's in a field and we're like, okay. And I knew that there was going to be an outside section. Yeah. I was under the, ins- the impression and I kind of misread it. It said, that, you know, you'll go through a field and then you go through the haunted house. I thought, since this building is super cool and, like, you could see that they had lights on and stuff in there, that the the haunt was going to be this field, and then you went inside of Hillview Manor proper. You never go in Hillview except to get your tickets. Yeah. It's all in this little field, and then you go through what's basically a glorified garage or storage area, and that's the haunted house. Yeah. So, (laughs) they have this notoriously cool, big, giant haunted building, and you never go in it. It's like the equivalent if, if Blood Prison at Mansfield was just outside the prison. Oh, my god! You got gosh. to see the prison, but you never went inside for the haunt. Uh, I don't know if I've ever been so disappointed yeah. in that. And, again, maybe my bad for not doing the research, but, um, yeah. Yeah. Like, I was under the impression, like, I had actually seen this as being a haunted attraction, and I was like, <laughs> oh, that would be really cool. And I just assumed it was inside the building. Right. I never I never thought, thought that I would have to research yeah. to see if, oh, the big, scary place – 
oh no, it's not really there. It's just behind it. You literally have to walk all the way around the building. Yeah, yeah. you never go in it. Um, now I guess if you do a VIP, you, you do get to like a tour or something. We didn't do that. We yeah. did normal. But um, but yeah, we wanted to definitely preface that, and we hope that people watching this it um not necessarily deters you from the attraction, but that way you know what you're uh, getting yourself into and don't get in and get bamboozled like we did. But let's, we will actually get into the proper, like, sets and props now. So we describe that you walk around. Now, there are, like, two things that happen before you get to the field. Yes, there is a, um, there's, um, there's actually somebody in the building, in, like, um, in the building they have actually, like, a active, like, a, a rec room, but there's actually like a screened off rec room area on that rec room. Well, there was somebody in there, like on a in a wheelchair, and he was hollering at us to help him. So that was one of the scares. He was spook he was spooky lit and everything, and he lit up and he was like, "Help me!" Yeah. And then there was also a car that honked at yeah, us from it was the a woods Jeep or something. Yeah. yeah. It honked, and then you go and um, yeah, and then you go through like this uh, oh, like a little tent thing, and that's yeah. when you go into this like field. Um, it's not a corn maze. It is like an actual field with like a path, and there's yeah. like various scenes. Um, there's various scenes throughout there. I think the first thing we came across was some witches. Mm -hmm. um, there was like a zombie playground, um, and then there were some like standalone structures. Yeah, before um, you get to the haunt. Yeah, yeah. We went into like a school. Um, there was an orphanage. Um, and then you get into like the main haunt, I guess you would say. Yes. And um, that had, like, it was more of your, like, traditional haunted house in there. You had, like, mm -hmm. a spooky Halloween room. You had a creepy kitchen. You had a bedroom. And then, of course, you have clowns. And there actually were some cool scenes in there. Like, mm -hmm. I do like the first scene you walk in because it's done up almost like a... Almost like like an old school, like, watching Halloween movies in the living room kind yeah. of thing. Like, yeah. You know, like, think, like, putting Halloween on while you're carbon jack lanterns or something yeah. kind of like that yeah and like she said there's clowns and there was a bedroom scene which we'll talk more about in actors because mm -hmm. there was something actually my favorite part of it something happened there <laughs> um now there were a couple like uh things like i don't know what it was there's something that someone was swinging at me um it was big and it kind of and it kind of hit me a little bit and it startled me i don't know what it was though remember that thing it was in the field it wasn't oh. in the house and like they swung it out i don't know what this was but yeah i don't know what it was either i, I couldn't know. tell it looked like it was supposed to be like a like a gurney but it was so covered with whatever was on top of it yeah. to cover it that you couldn't see what was actually on the gurney it wasn't swinging out enough yeah i mean like they did a decent enough job the sets and props weren't bad you definitely could tell some of the stuff was from like a spirit halloween or yeah. something that's very accessible to the general public but um they, they did a decent job of kind of like set dressing and making it fun and whimsical it did definitely felt very old school yeah um so if you're into that kind of thing it was kind of cool to like see some of the old school stuff but i mean obviously the elephant in the room is can't stress enough that there's this amazing looming building that you just never get to go inside yeah, of for the attraction yeah. you just walk around it and you're just like why and like we'll talk about something similar um when we review um the jail of terror but like all they honestly have to do is throw some actors in the main building give you a flashlight and turn the lights off and just have a predetermined path yeah. and just scare you in there that's all they yeah. even have to do honestly like because i know they probably don't want to like alter the building and do stuff like that i get that entirely right. but like there's things they could do where they wouldn't have to do that yeah and still let you be in the ambiance of the creepy mm -hmm. building yeah but um yeah, that, i mean that being said again there weren't this is a shorter haunt which we get to more in value but there just weren't a ton of sets and props but what was there was done decent enough yeah because it's just very old school um i would equate it to a little bit above like a fairground type of haunt yeah 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 but uh, what we gave it a six point five. Yes, is what we gave sets and props. So, so moving on to actors. Um, so when you go to get your tickets and check in, you're greeted by just a whole gaggle of nurses. There's just like a million people dressed up as nurses. There's a whole bunch, <laughs> just all over the place. Um, we mentioned him earlier, the guy that was in the window as we were walking to yeah. the haunted house. Um, and it was funny because he actually helped us, um, cause we weren't sure if we were supposed to go into this field cause they told us to stay on the path to right. begin with. And we're like, I don't, do we go into this field? We were all like perplexed, all four of us. And we hear, yeah, go into the field. Mm -hmm. The guy that was in the window is now at the exit sign watching us. And he's like, yeah, go that way. 
Oh, I didn't realize it was the same guy. It was the same guy. I thought that was funny. Yeah, because, like, we actually, because I think all of us were like, oh, this is probably where we go into Hillview. And then it's like, okay, oh, well, we must go in Hillview after this part. Yeah. Um, so, I know one of them we really liked was the um, the nun. She was cool. Yeah, because she actually was in an outside area, and she was pretending to be kind of like a static prop. She was kind of like leaning against a wall and as we walked past her she actually turned Mm -hmm. and she actually spoke to me she's like she said pray with me yeah and it was kind of startling because i was like i didn't expect it to be a nun you know and she's just like pray with me confess your sins or something like that and then she kind of like went around us and ended up going into the school and she ended up ended, um, yeah. scaring the people that were in front of us because she actually, in full nun fashion, she had a ruler that she made the big loud noise I with. Oh, that was, the nun was the one with the ruler as the well. The nun was the I one with the ruler. That, yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, I will say that the actors definitely were the better part. Like, they all kind of gave it their all, which I yes. liked. The yeah. costuming was pretty decent. Nothing like, nothing crazy, no. but like, still, like, they fit the part. Yeah. Because um, it was still. It was still daylightish, actually, when we were going. It wasn't, like, dark, dark yet. Yeah, it wasn't dark, dark yet. It was still, like, a little bit um, light out. And they still managed to weave themselves around and get us a couple times, yeah, actually. Yeah. Like, they did actually jump scares a few times, these actors did. Um, there was a really cool guy. Um, he was, like, a zombie. Like, he was just crawling all over the ground. Yeah. And he was, like, crawling at, like, a really fast speed. He was. He almost seemed like he was on fast-forward mode. <laughs> yeah, and at one point, I thought, I, I didn't think he had any legs. Josh swears he had legs. No, I saw his legs. He definitely okay. he had legs. He didn't look like he had Bam. legs when I saw him, and I was like, whoa, oh my God. <laughs> it scared me, because I was like, he got no legs. Um, but yeah, he was really good. Um, there was a kid in the kitchen that was really <laughs> funny. Yeah, he was fun. But it was kind of a cool double scare moment, because yeah. like the kid, like, you know, he let us into the kitchen, and was asking us if we wanted to get in their freezer. And then, like, some guy popped out of the freeze, and the yeah. kid, like, shut him in there. Yeah. And then, probably our favorite, and, and, and it definitely is the thing that scared me the most, is you walk <laughs> into the bedroom scene I mentioned earlier, mm-hmm. and there's a girl in a bed. And I think I may have seen this in another haunt, but um, what it is is, like, her head's there, and there's a fake body, and her her body's underneath, and so the bed's on wheels. And all of a sudden, the whole bed just comes flying <laughs> at you, and she, like, turns it like she's drifting. Yeah. And, like, came up right, like, I mean, almost. She didn't hit me, but, like, almost knocked me out and scared the crap out of me because I just was not expecting the whole bed to turn and just fly at me. It was funny because she was talking in, like, the third person, too. She's like, here she comes. Here she comes again. <laughs> yes, yes. It was so funny. <laughs> Um, yeah, and, like, she just kept getting this, and she probably scared me a couple of times, Yo. because it's so freaky, this whole, whole ass bed just flying Yeah, and you're not, you're not sure which way to go, because she's just gonna move that way anyway, and so you're trying to go this way, and she's like, nope, here she comes, and you're just like, Yeah, I really, I really enjoyed that, and I yeah. thought it was, I thought it was definitely one of the more creative scares. Yes, that definitely. Um... There was a clown on stilts, which was really cool. I did not expect that at yeah. this kind of place. He was, was almost like, as tall as the haunt. Yeah. <laughs> the haunt wasn't as tall. I'm like, his head was almost on the ceiling. Yeah, his head was on the ceiling. Yeah. Um, there was a guy with a horn, which I did not expect again. Uh, I'm like, oh, God, he's going to do something. Because he was in like a like a box. And I'm like, he's going to do something. What's he going to do? And sure enough, big old horn. Scared the crap out of me. Yeah, yeah, that guy was fun. But yeah, yeah. there was actually a decent amount. Again, the haunt wasn't very big. Yeah. But we felt like there was, um, it was pretty back to back. There wasn't much dead space at all, which mm-hmm. is good because, again, <laughs> the, the actors are what made this experience actually enjoyable. Yes. Because um, we did actually have a good time. Uh, but yeah, we really liked them. All of them did a good job. There was dialogue. They would stalk you and they had good hiding spots. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, because the costuming wasn't the best. It was a little bit more what you would what you would expect from, like we said, a little bit better than a fairground level haunt. But yeah. still, overall, we gave them an eight point five. We think that the actors did a pretty good job, and because, like I said, there was there was a good amount of them. Excuse me. So moving on to scare factor. Um, we did get a decent amount of yeah. jump scares, but we really do think it's um, a, a very family friendly. Yeah, because there's of not haunt. like a lot of like really loud noises. Yeah. It's not like real intense. The atmosphere definitely is way more fun because again, it's old school. Yeah, there's not a lot of gore yeah. or anything like that. The only real um, scary element is just the pop scare, the jump yeah. scare, and yeah. then you know, I think there was even I think there was like a chainsaw guy at the end, but I think his chainsaw failed, so he's like, oh, and then just kind of went back. <laughs> 
Um, but yeah, nothing real scary. And like, yeah, like I said, there's a little tiny bit of gore here and there, but this is definitely one that I think, um, you could take your kids to now. And it, and it is again, because weird, like you think it might be something intense with them. Like, can you do these waivers and all this qu- crazy crap? Yeah. But all the waiver is, is about basically being inside the building, Yeah. which mm-hmm. you don't get to do unless I guess you do the VIP ticket. Yeah. So I, yeah, real weird there. But, um, yeah, scare factor, I, it, decent amount of jump scares. But besides that, um, yeah, not, not much else in the realm of, um, yeah. scare. Um, so we did give it a six mm-hmm. for scare factor. Um, value wise, it took us about 12 minutes from the beginning. Yes. Um, and so by beginning, that does not actually mean when we entered the haunt, because I didn't know exactly what was going to happen. The beginning was basically soon as the nurses told us to follow the path. Yeah. And it's probably a good like three minute walk from the path to where the haunt begins. Now, mind you, there is the Jeep and one person in a window. Mm -hmm. So technically, I guess you might call that the haunt, but... (laughs) So, I mean, if you're actually talking about the haunt proper, which I would say as soon as you enter the field, it's probably more like nine minutes long. Yeah. Um, so, it's $20 for general admission, um, $15 for child admission. Also adds to the fact that we said it's family friendly. They literally yeah. have ticket pricing for kids. Um, 55 for VIP and 50 for child VIP. Yeah. And the VIP includes, um, I believe, it includes a tour of Hillview Manor. The haunt, and I think it comes with a T-shirt. Yeah, we can look. I can look that up real quick. Okay. Um, so, like, so I just pulled up, and it says you do get like with the VIP approximate a one-hour tour, um, approximate scare manner thirty to forty minutes. Now, this is the kind of stuff that irritates me, and I've been noticing this a lot because mm-hmm. haunts will say the time to take to get through, and it's always so wildly wrong. Thirty to forty minutes, not even mm-hmm. half. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, it's just a lie. Wow. Like, I mean, we don't walk fast. No. I just think that that's kind of ridiculous. Um, <laughs> yeah, but anyways, yeah, so it looks like you do get a tour um, of the thing. And it said a VIP. t-shirt, too. Did it say t-shirt Yeah, somewhere? commemorative t-shirt. Oh, dear. Okay, VIP tickets include tour of Hilby Manor, skip the line, and a commemorative t-shirt. So, I mean, if you want a tour of it, and you, I mean, like, honestly, I think that $55 might not be a bad value if you're not want to do other haunts and you're like wanting a t- and you're wanting a tour since you get the t-shirt as well plus yeah. you get to skip the line mm-hmm. and like the way they did it i feel like if you do go and it's a busier night um you might have to wait a while but most like you can do walk-ins i would recommend if you're interested in doing this place to buy them online because yeah. it was kind of a hassle <laughs> and thankfully we were like, one of the first people there but like having to fill out these waivers and all of this stuff mm-hmm. if they're busy i feel like would be pure hell oh my gosh yeah i think yeah. it would be just chaotic but um value based off of the actual just the haunt since it's so short and what was it 20 20 20 general admission it took us about 12 dollars from the beginning of the uh, yeah 12 12 (laughs) dollars 12 minutes from the beginning of the haunt yeah um we gave it a 6.5 right just because it's shorter and like the quality isn't like it's okay but like and 20 dollars isn't that expensive but still like yeah. Should be a little bit longer. And I also feel like maybe it should be pointed out on the site again that you don't get to go to the, the, the building at all. Like yeah. it should be very clear about that because I think the people will be under that assumption. But. Right. Um, so overall, we gave them a 6.75. Yeah. It's fun. Also, if you, uh, I wouldn't drive far for this, not more than an hour. But if there's other haunts in the area that you might want to do, I don't even yeah. really know what's that close to Newcastle. There might be things. I don't know. Um, but like it's definitely like more of a family one. And if, you, yeah, and if you're interested in getting a tour of the place at night, might not be a bad idea to do that VIP. I don't know what the tour consists of. I can't judge it on that. But, yeah. you know, that might be something that's interesting because it is a cool location. Yeah, definitely. But, um, yeah, I mean, have you guys been there before? Have you been there years past? Has it changed? You know, let us know. Um, let us know any place you might want us to um, go to. I don't know if we want to make it this year. But, again, we always like to make lists for the coming years because haunt season always tends to go by so fast. We only have, you know, really one or two more weekends um, really to go places. But, um, yeah, and, again... Make sure you're liking and subscribing, and also ring that notification bell so you don't miss any upcoming videos. And like I said, there will be four more if you're watching this video when it actually releases four more this week. And then the following weekend, we are going to be going to Maryland for Markov's Forest and a couple other ones. We haven't 100% decided on the other ones, so if you, that's a good thing. Recommend one. So Markov's Forest is for sure. We're already about the tickets. Um, let us know what you think in that area around Maryland, Baltimore, because I know Bennett's Curse is probably going to happen. Yeah. But then we're not sure on the other ones exactly yet. So let us know what you think um, you would like to see us do around that area. But thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you in the next episode. Bye. Bye.